Uh, another uh, reason that it helps with weight loss is that it is very satisfying. When you add it into foods, it will satisfy your hunger so that you don't feel the need or the want to eat as much during the meal. It will also um, keep hunger pains uh, away longer between meals so you have less of a tendency to want a snack between meals. And so at the end of the day, you actually end up uh, consuming fewer calories but still feeling satisfied. And then the third reason and probably the most important reason why coconut oil can help with weight loss is that it stimulates metabolism. And so when you eat a meal with coconut oil, your metabolism is kicked up a notch, and so you are burning off calories at an accelerated rate. And so again, by the end of the day, you've burned off more calories, so there are fewer calories left over to be converted into fat uh, to add to weight. And it's really interesting because they've, they've done research on, on the effects of coconut oil in boosting metabolism. And in normal weight individuals, they've found that uh, a single meal containing the medium chain fatty acids will increase metabolism in a normal weight individual by 48% boost in metabolism. In overweight people, the boost in metabolism is 65%. So the more overweight a person is, the more effect that coconut oil has on boosting metabolism and then helping them uh, lose this excess weight. Now, this effect isn't uh, seen for just an hour or two after a meal, but research has shown that after a single meal containing uh, medium-chain fatty acids, that metabolism is elevated and remains elevated for a full 24 hours. So for 24 hours, uh, metabolism is burning at a higher rate, and you're burning off calories at a higher rate. So all these things combined together help. Um, you can use coconut oil for uh, a weight loss program. And for the best effect, I would recommend that coconut oil be added into a low-carb diet for the, for the best weight loss effect. If you combine coconut oil with a weight loss or with a, a low-carb diet, you will experience the, the greatest amount of weight loss. How come you think it is that many island people who live a lot on fruits and vegetables and rice, maybe on fish and other things, are able to be so thin? Well, you know, um, part of that is because they incorporate coconut in their diet. And so because of all these things that I mentioned previously with metabolism and everything, it helps to satisfy their hunger so they don't overeat. Uh, it also gives them energy because when your metabolism is boosted, you have more energy, and so they can become very physically active. And then again, when you're more physically active, you're going to burn off more calories, and that will also help with your uh, weight control. I was told that for people who take thyroid, that when you begin to add coconut oil into your daily regimen, that you have to check your levels of thyroid because you may not need as much. That's right. And this is, goes back to the metabolism part. When you take the coconut oil, it boosts your metabolism. And so if people who are on um, thyroid medication, uh, that's one of the things that the thyroid medication does is boost their metabolism. And so when they add coconut oil into their diet, it may boost their metabolism too much, so they have to monitor um, their thyroid medication, and many people can reduce that or even t completely get off thyroid medication um, by incorporating coconut oil in their daily diet. It's pretty remarkable. Yes. I've taken thyroid since I was a little girl, and I'm experimenting with this right now and watching it very closely. I'm going to have my levels checked in about a month. Okay, great. See what's happening. I love the evidence-based science. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about other people's concerns about their blood cholesterol level, fears about saturated fats, making that more difficult for people, the confusion around that. What's your take, Bruce? 
Yes, and that's the primary concern people have when they learn about coconut oil. They have this fear of saturated fats, and coconut oil is a very highly saturated fat. But coconut oil does not have a detrimental effect on the heart. It's actually a heart tonic and it doesn't have a detrimental effect on cholesterol. People are always worried about cholesterol. So let me talk about cholesterol a little bit and concerns with coconut oil. When, Please. When, when someone adds coconut oil into their diet, their total cholesterol levels may rise a little bit or even fall a little bit. But either way, it doesn't matter because... When people start eating coconut oil, what happens is that it increases their HDL, their good cholesterol level. Now, according to researchers, the higher our good cholesterol or HDL level is, the better, the more protection we have against heart disease. And that's what happens when you eat coconut oil. It actually increases the HDL. So in some cases, total cholesterol will actually go up, not because of bad cholesterol, but because the good cholesterol is increasing. And you can't, you can't really um, gauge the risk of heart disease based on total cholesterol. And the reason for that is because total cholesterol includes both the HDL good cholesterol and the LDL bad cholesterol, and you don't know how much of each one contributes to the total. And so they've come out with a a better indication, that's the cholesterol ratio. The cholesterol ratio actually uh, determines, you know, how much of each is in the total. And when people incorporate coconut oil into their diet, the cholesterol ratio actually declines, indicating a reduced risk of heart disease. In fact, coconut oil has more of an effect on the cholesterol ratio and in reducing it than any other type of fat in the diet. So if you want to use cholesterol values as your um, measurement of heart disease risk, then coconut oil protects against heart disease better than any other fat in the diet. That's impressive, but what do you think then about fish oils? Fish oils are totally different from coconut oil. They don't have the special medium chain fatty acids that coconut oil have. Um, The omega-3s in the fish oil, what they do is they're converted into prostaglandins uh, in the body, uh, which help reduce uh, inflammation, which is always associated with heart disease. They help thin the blood a little bit, which is associated with heart disease. So it works on a totally different principle. But you're an advocate of fish oils too, right? Or not? Fish oils. Um, People are like mixed fish about oils this. In that you need some of the essential fatty acids. And fish oils, if you're going to get your, your omega 3s, fish oils are the best place to get them. They're more efficient than the plant omega 3s. They're like 10 times more efficient than the plant um, omega-3. So if you're going to get the omega-3s, get them from fish oils. Uh, You can also get it from eggs and grass-fed beef. Interesting. When you say that coconut oil is a heart tonic, is that because of what you just described with regard to its contribution to the cholesterol ratio? Or something else? It's primarily to do to that. But, you know, a lot of people don't realize that the heart muscle, the energy, or the the, um, fuel used by the heart is primarily saturated fats. The heart runs on saturated fat. It doesn't want polyunsaturated fats. It doesn't want monounsaturated fats. It runs on saturated. That's the fuel that the cells in the heart muscle used to generate energy. And this is totally surprising to most people because they don't realize that. And so the coconut oil provides a very easy source of energy for the heart muscle. That's exciting. It's really exciting. Yes. Because this is a manageable thing that the average person can do. It's doable. Definitely. And, and, you know, this isn't just theoretical uh, scientific stuff, but this is practical. You see this stuff every day. If coconut oil, you know, being highly saturated, 
actually did contribute to heart disease, it would be extremely easy to 